Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Die Cattle Fake. I'll fold out June 16th on Season of Mist. The album has 9 tracks, 44 minutes in length, and this is the band's 11 full length studio album. They are a Hungarian avant garde metal band. The structure of this album almost makes you feel like you're blind to it. Very difficult to understand, very difficult to decipher, very difficult to see the path in front of you. But the more you listen to the album, it's almost like you're putting glasses on and what wasn't clear before, it becomes a lot better and more defined later. An album that has a sense of growth, an album that's put together from a structural point of view, almost like a history of the band's discography. Starting off with songs that connect with the earlier records, then moving into a more progressive sound, a more avant-garde sound, and then finishing off the album with a song that once again brings you back to those same roots, allowing the album to go full circle, but also a display of where the discography has gone and where it currently sits. An interesting design, a design that also gives a lot of quality to the collective. Not to say that the individual songs don't stand on their own, but this is an album that you're only going to get what you need to get from it if you sit down and you listen to every single song in the order that it's placed. It's one of those albums, it's a record. It's not a collection of songs, even though it might feel like that at first glance because of the overall diversity, but this is a record. It has a structure that unifies it and it has a structure that gives quality to it. As far as the sound is concerned, this is a more extreme album sound-wise, at least when you compare it to its predecessors. But it's an album that sound-wise also connects, like I said, to the roots of the band, to the black metal roots of the band. This is definitely a very black metal infused record. But that's not just everything about this album. This is an album that brings some jazz elements, that brings some folk elements. It brings obviously progressive elements, avant-garde elements. It's a super diverse and eclectic record. An album that just shows the creativity of its creator without necessarily having boundaries on how far that, that creativity can go. Sure, the main spice and perhaps the spinal cord, maybe even the red line that somewhat connects these songs is black metal. The experience of that sound, the darkness that comes from it, that is definitely the common denominator throughout. This is an album that doesn't depend as much on atmospheric elements, even though there are some in a few songs on this record, but this is not an overly atmospheric album at all. This is a more direct, this is a more aggressive, this is a more intense album, definitely more black metal influence from start to end, and that is the experience that you're gonna get from it. The two main components of this record, from my standpoint, is definitely the electronic sound that this record has quite a bit, uh, and the guitars. Now, not to say that I didn't like some of the other infusions, I honestly enjoyed the violins tremendously, the flute, all, all of these changes, all, all of these nuances that the music has, all of these ideas that come to life in musical notes are super intriguing for the listener because with every door that you open, there's two more doors that you have to choose from. So it's an album that's always creating obstacles, but at the same time, giving you paths in which you can take and how you can pass those same obstacles. But if I have to narrow it down to the two main core elements of the sound experience, it has to be the guitars, it has to be the electronic side of the sound. An electronic side of the sound that plays a big role on the nuances, it plays a big role on the diversity, and it plays a big role on the movement of the record. If you're gonna see an album that in the first couple of songs, it's very stable, it's very consistent with that black metal sound, where the guitars play more of a predominant role, then in the middle tracks, the electronic elements come into the forefront and they take over behind the steering wheel in terms of where this album is going to lead you. Then you start to see the guitars creeping back in, still with those electronic elements having a huge amount of power and really dictating the nuances within the songs and the ebbs and flows within the tracks and from track to track. And then the album closes off with once again those guitars having a lot of predominance and having a lot of strength, a lot of intensity. This is the design. So you cannot look at this album and not talk about those electronic elements that create atmosphere, create sound. Uh, it, it, it creates a different kind of darkness. It creates a different stratosphere as far as how you're gonna perceive this record and how you're gonna digest it. 
at times almost feeling psychedelic, taking a different experience, creating a different experience altogether. Uh, not necessarily in an abrupt way, not necessarily in a jarring way, melting really well with what the guitars offer before, what the guitars offer within, and what the guitar is going to offer afterwards. And then the guitar sound, from the acoustic to the more black metal driven sound, uh, th they're so alive, very textured, very layered, as is the whole sound on this album. But the guitar infusion and how much uh, predominance they take either in the forefront when they're driving, when they have that intensity, that aggression, or in the background when they move into that more acoustic sound that brings warmth to the experience that dissipates a little bit of the darkness that this overall record has. The guitars play such an important role and I feel like they are probably the main conductor of sound and experience from the first all the way to the last song. Vocally, this album is as diverse as the sound behind it. You're gonna get a lot out of it. You're gonna get humming, you're gonna get spoken word almost, you're gonna get really heavy, deep vocals, you're gonna get uh, female vocals. I mean, there's just so much variety on this album that the vocals become uh, such a, uh, an ingredient in terms of the ebbs and flows and in terms of the morphing and experience that this record offers. It would be impossible to have a one-size-fits-all approach when the sound is as dynamic as it is. I love the vocal performance, I love the duality that it has, uh, I, I love the layers that they added, the texture that it gives, the warmth that it offers, and some songs giving a little bit more energy and even a little bit more atmosphere when musically that energy and that atmosphere wasn't there, creating dualities with heavy sound and really harmonic vocals in the forefront, um, matching the intensity of the sound with the intensity of the vocals, I mean there's just everything for everybody vocally on this record and that is definitely a massive selling point because it allows the sound to never feel disconnected from the overall experience. The, the vocals help to be that glue that kind of brings it all together. This is a difficult record to understand. This is a difficult record to digest. But once you solve the puzzle of what this album is all about, I feel like this is a record that definitely becomes memorable because of how it took you there and once you're there and, and the light bulb goes off, it's really hard to disconnect from it. But it's definitely not an album for everybody. I think some fans are going to feel a little bit intrigued by it, but at the same time a little bit put off by the diversity that it offers. But others that can see outside the box and like I said, that can solve the puzzle, you're going to fall in love with it. This is going to be one of those records that there's no middle ground. Either you love it or you hate it. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I have to start off with Alfold, the title track, a song that has a very dark and heavy sound, pushing that black metal influence into the forefront, creating an overall heavy experience, dipping at times into an area where the guitar sound feels more controlled, uh, even stripped down at times, and, and that that's where you start to see the guitars creating nuances and creating movement and having their stamp on the song but not one single approach style stamp. The DNA is not the same at the beginning as it is in the middle, as it is at the end. And the guitars play a huge role in that change in DNA as this song evolves, as this song morphs and grows. The bass is key in this track. I really enjoy the bass sound on this song, specifically in the more stripped down portions of the track where you feel like the song kind of lets go a little bit and it's not as heavy, it's not as punchy. Uh, the, the female vocals in those parts, in those more stripped down parts, really help elevate the atmosphere that those portions have, but also the warmth that exists, not allowing this song to be overly dark from start to end, infusing some moments, not of brightness, but at least of light into the overall darkness that surrounds this track. Super interesting vocally, super interesting musically, the acoustic guitar sound, a complete change from how the song starts, so heavy, so driven, so to the point. So it's it's a guitar-centric song, but a guitar-centric song that takes you on an incredible journey. Next you have Fo Leonder, uh, and this is a more electronic-infused track. Bringing in other elements allow you to see how you can keep that electronic sound almost as the spinal cord, but bringing other elements to make the experience a lot richer, a lot more dynamic, a lot warmer. The first one that they infuse is the flute, and I loved it. It's slightly folky, but that's not the point on this song. I almost felt like 
the, the, the purpose was not to make the song folky, was just to give more of an earthy experience to the overall track, almost try to counteract the electronic robotic side that the track has as it starts. So that's an interesting dynamic because once again, you see growth, you see movement, uh, you still see the connection with the guitar sound, with a heavy guitar sound as well. It comes in, it shows itself, it's like a little bit of a breadcrumb so that allows this track to not, not to feel completely disconnected of the songs that came before and the songs that come after while infusing some elements that we hadn't seen up until this point. But when you do that, you still have to keep something there that keeps the DNA of the record moving forward. And I felt like the guitars definitely did that. Uh, and then you also have this sci-fi electronic sound experience that comes in, goes away, comes in, it goes away. But it, it also allows the track to move into a different realm. Finishing off with a violin was outstanding. The violin sound once again brought clarity to the song. It brought warmth to the song. It brought soul to the song. Really outstanding song in terms of all the different elements and how they're infusing traditional elements with more futuristic elements and still allowing the track to have great life. Last but not least, Chilagot Gorgetto. Uh, this song for me, vocally, is one of the best in the entire album. It's definitely outstanding from that point of view and it's why I picked it as one of my top three. It has great presence vocally. Uh, it, it's, a, it's another heavier sounding song but when you get those Gregorian chanting style vocals on the track, that stops you, that, that makes you pay attention. That creates a different kind of atmosphere. This is a track that sound wise, perhaps doesn't give you the same atmosphere that it does vocally, but the sound sets the table for what the vocals are going to deliver. It's a very complete song, but a song where the atmosphere comes from a different element, comes from the vocals, not from the sound, but the sound still helps define it. I love how rich, how layered, how textured, how dark this song is consistently from start to end. But at the same time, in that darkness, it finds a way to become super inviting for the listener. It's almost like you know you're getting into this dark place and my, there might be trouble ahead, but you can't contain yourself. You just have to open that door and walk through into that darkness. This is it, Die Cattle Fake with Alfold out June 16th on Season of Mist. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.